Okay, so uh, we will kick off. It's again a pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine, uh, David Kennedy. David has done some, some fabulous work that he'll be sharing with you here today um, <clears throat> on uh, what's most certainly, in my opinion, a silver lining to the clouds that was COVID is, is all of the work that David's after creating and hopefully will be bringing forward into uh, non-COVID times. So, David, what I'll do is um, you have 20 minutes. I'll give you a, a, a 15 minute slot that will allow five minutes for, for questions. So I'll give you a two minute warning if that's OK. Excellent. Excellent, Mark. And thanks very much for having me. OK, so the floor is yours whenever you're ready to start. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. Um, I suppose just in brief, uh, what I'm aiming to do with you today really is to tell you a story really about um, the movement um, from a synchronous face-to-face -face teaching module to uh, basically a, a wholly asynchronous module. And the key learnings for me was the importance in which the tools that were made available um, on Moodle, uh, which is branded as a loop in our university, um, really helped to accommodate and make this reality possible. Um, so just a bit of general information, uh, I suppose, and frame. I suppose background to what I'm about to tell you is that the module in question is, is uh, from the Bachelor of Education Honours Degree Programme in DCU, uh, which is focuses really, it's an, an initial teacher training programme for primary education in Ireland. And the module that uh, I'm going to tell you about is ED 20118, Religious Education and the Child. Um, the class size is 405 students, and uh, I'm the sole lecturer on the course. It's a five credit module, and it was with second years, and it ran over the course of one semester. Now, prior to COVID, uh, the module was run in a very traditional fashion. It was synchronous face-to-face -face teaching with weekly plenary lectures with the 400 group, and then bi-weekly seminars where we broke down that 400 group to about uh, 30 students per, per uh, seminar session. Traditionally, even the assessment method, again, was very much a traditional academic assignment of 2,000 words, and all the readings and uh, assessment information was all made available via Moodle, um, but in a very, I suppose, uh, uncoordinated fashion in the sense that you can see here from the screenshot of the old page um, all the material is just kind of listed there it's kind of dumped there really um, whilst we have a use of the of the headings you know per lecture topics there's still a very kind of um, disheveled look to the page for and make a kind of challenge for students to I suppose uh, make their way through it but that was perfectly fine really and would have managed to, to meet the needs of students really in that totally face-to-face -face setting because again this was merely a point of reference as opposed to being the central learning environment for where all their learning took place. So when COVID came along we had to move the entire module to a completely uh, asynchronous environment and there was this I suppose you could say there was a sense of awe and hopelessness in one, in one regard when you were there looking at the screen and the panic sets in um, that it's already challenging enough to try and manage a module with 405 students in a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, synchronous environment, let alone to having to move the module completely to an asynchronous uh, module. Now, this the, the complete move to complete asynchronous module was, I suppose, in part really the, the main reason why we had to go totally asynchronous was because of timetable changes and all of this trying to meet the needs with COVID in the university. Um, so when I got really started off the journey of thinking how I could recreate this module and how Moodle and Loop could really take effect is that I wanted to take what I was doing really well in a synchronous context and reimagine it in this asynchronous context. So it was really, really important to take what was being done well in that face-to-face -face sense and then try and replicate it in an asynchronous environment. And at the heart, particularly as well, because of the module that it's in religious education, and then because of the wider context of, of COVID and just, I suppose, the, the general um, philosophy of education that we try to embody within the religious education uh, uh, department is that we really uh, sought to ensure that the human person was at the center of the module in a very holistic sense and UDL the Universal Design for Learning played a really strong role in making an inclusive relational and dynamic and inviting meaningful experience for students um, and I suppose the main thing that I wanted to achieve was that I wanted students to learn something and not to merely complete something 
And that was about finding that balance in that asynchronous environment to, to try and create a meaningful learning experience. So to assist me in kind of, I suppose, showing you the tools in which I use to maybe try my best and humbly really try my best to make uh, achieve that goal, um, we're going to look at the, the importance of clarity and consistency. So looking at tools like Moodle Books, communication, and uh, just the outline of assessment briefs, et cetera. The creating, creation of presence and absence. So really it was in this paradoxical space uh, because it was an asynchronous module that you really wanted to, to have some teacher presence there and they, that they didn't feel completely isolated and on their own within that learning environment. And then the big challenge that we had, as I mentioned previously, um, we had bi-weekly seminars in the face-to-face -face context. And it was in these seminars that the real teaching happened in the sense of that the teachers got to engage with the curriculum and the various programs in a very hands-on way to learn how to teach and how to manage a classroom within the subject area. So we had to try and reimagine this uh, in an asynchronous environment. And this is where H5P came in really important, uh, and the use of embedded videos and student forums. And just a caveat at the end was that the benefit that happened through those uh, seminars was that there was far more usage of discussion forms than I previously experienced. So the clarity and consistency dimension then in terms of communication was really important. So earlier on in this presentation already, I flagged the page of how it looked prior to COVID. And I very much felt a bit like a Ron Burgundy moment. Hey, everyone, come and see how good I look when I finished redesigning my loop page um, in light of the CPD that I had uh, participated in over the summer months. Uh, and you can see already immediately from the start was it you have already a, mo a, mo a module handbook for students where they find all their lecture topics, learning outcomes, assessment details, recommended me readings, and then a, a clear communication procedure as well as support resources. Their submission boxes for assessment uh, are, are, are there very clearly as well. And then you can see here um, that when it comes to lecture topics, uh, each lecture topic had its own individual loop book and they had the same uh, structure uh, and content across every lecture in the sense of that in each book you found a pre-recorded lecture, uh, you found readings, a reading list, and you found a, a study task, be it a loop quiz uh, or a H5P interactive uh, session. So when it came to the module handbook, and as I mentioned, this was previously a face-to-face -face module, we really had to try and, I suppose, convert students over to an asynchronous learning uh, environment in a very short period of time. And this is where the Thomas Aguinas' quote really stood out in my mind of to convert somebody, go and take them by the hand and guide them. So the big lesson I learned was straight away from day one, you cannot be clear enough uh, and pragmatic enough in terms of communication and layout of the module for the student and what they're going to take up and what, they're, what we're hoping they will learn and how they can achieve, successfully achieve and learn in this module. So this is where the module loop book uh, really became useful. So within that loop book, when you clicked in, uh, the first thing you had was a, a description of the course uh, uh, and, and an embedded video. As you can see there, um, I had uh, Irish sign language students uh, in the module. So all uh, uh, video content had to um, be interpreted by ISL interpreters. Um, you see very clear assessment brief with the rubric and everything presented, but each section had a uh, corresponding video input explaining uh, what they had to do. So they had a choice of reading or, or watching. Um, clear expectations outlined for them. Again, you have the video input and the same again when it comes to the, to the reading list. And what was really important within, the, within this asynchronous environment and the use of loop for me in particular was I wanted the students to have everything at one click away. So if it's a reading, it had to be one click away. If it was for a book, it was one click away. So their whole reading list, as you can see here, were all hyperlinked immediately to the documents. They didn't have to go and try and find something else somewhere else. So in terms of the lectures then, uh, this is where each lecture topic had a loop book. You had your lecture inside with your embedded video and then an also a PDF copy of the slides. Uh, then you had your assigned readings for your, for your lecture. And then you had your interactive study task uh, uh, or just a study quiz using loop, uh, loop quizzes. And this is accessible all via hyperlink. But it was very clear um, and coordinated in how the students were guided by the hand through the module. One of the big things that I learned in my CPT around asynchronous learning as well was the importance of presence and creating this presence and absence and more importantly to not be a wally you need you don't need to be have to be found and sought out by the student, you should be very clearly there, so when it came to any kind of, of communication um, to students be it in an announcement forum. Um, 
I tried my best where possible to give video uh, uh, communication as well. Um, the same then for each lecture topic. Uh, each lecture topic had an introductory background video of like 30 seconds outlining what they were going to find in the lecture, what we were going to look at, and the same then again for each lecture topic. So in each part of the of the module and its layout, there was a corresponding um, visual presence uh, and communication uh, from myself. Uh, what was kind of <laughs> funny over the period was it was nearly like a, a, a beard growing montage uh, over the course of COVID through to the videos as the module progressed. Um, but I suppose the key challenge for us, the real challenge within the RE team was how do we recreate these very engaged and pragmatic seminars in an asynchronous context. So to assist us with this, um, the normal layout of a seminar would have consisted of a very brief presentation, PowerPoint presentation, and then some activity in some regard. So we kept the topics the same, but we really reimagined them. We came together as a team and had a group conversation around the topic and recorded and then uh, uh, provided uh, ISL interpretation. So students watched this video initially, and then they participated in an interactive H5P um, activity, which got them to engage with the curricular documents and programs, and got them to really, um, I suppose, embed and consolidate any learning that they had, uh, both not only in the seminar, but also throughout the lecture content. And the big unexpected uh, finding for us through developing uh, the module in this way and the seminars in this way was that at the end of each seminar, uh, they had a task. We wanted to hear what the students were were, were doing, where how they were finding things, both informally, uh, outside of a uh, formative assessment. So each seminar session ended with a student task where they had to go away and look at the curriculum or, or look at the program documents and then feed back um, to the student sub, uh, discussion forum. And this was really, really an active space over the course of the semester. Students really posted a lot of information. And one of the things that they noted in, 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 a, in, in a consultation that I've had with students after the module running was that um, by addressing what they've uploaded in the forums, be it by the embedded videos for the seminars or by email or in the forum itself, it really also enhanced uh, this uh, sense of presence that was there for the students over the course of the module. Um, but if you're interested in finding more out, I suppose, in more detail about, uh, I suppose, uh, I suppose the other aspects of the course, including the assessment method, we moved from a traditional assessment to loop reflect. How did how did that um, come about? Um, engaged with uh, building up the professional community of practice by engaging with professionals out there working in the field by having video podcast conversations with uh, with teachers at different stages in their career, uh, patrons and chairs of boards of management, and those sub basically those involved in the provision and governance of education in Ireland and those involved at the chalkboard. Um, you'll find more information here uh, on a podcast I've done with DCU on the module and um, on a case study that's available on the Teaching Enhancement website. So on that, uh, thanks for listening and uh, I hope I can answer any questions that you may have as a bit of a speed run through it, uh, but I suppose I, I said I'd try and get as much in for you as I could. <laughs>